What's up everyone? Today we're going to talk about the 24mm F2 DG DN. DN stands for full frame mirrorless. Not quite sure how that works out. So I've been using the Sigma for a little bit and in this review I hope to answer a question. How does this lens stack up to the 24 G Master, the pinnacle of 24 millimeters? Let's find out right now. Spoiler alert, this lens is a modern optic by Sigma. It does perform and compete very well with the GM. However, there is a potential quirk and I'll explain a little bit later in the review. Before going further, be sure to like this video and if you secretly love Sony gear reviews, subscribe to this channel and I promise your wife won't find out about it. What sets this lens apart from other lenses is the design. Let's have a look. The full metal build is an absolute beauty to look at. The lens construction is composed of 11 groups, 13 elements, 1 FLD, 2 SLD, and 2 spherical lenses. There's a weather sealing gasket at the rear and however it lacks internal seals. There's a physical autofocus manual focus switch which feels impossible to toggle on accident. Really nice touch here by Sigma. In the darkest of scenarios, it may be a little bit difficult to get mounted, and that's where I find this next feature the most handy, the hard nipple. The aperture ring has one third stop increments and does not have a clickless option. However, that said, it is extremely pleasing and so satisfying to use in the field. The manual focus throw of this lens is well dampened and arguably the finest of all Sony E-mount lenses. The i-series really nails it out of the park. And this lens is no exception. The lens has 9 rounded aperture blades, minimum focus distance of 9.6 inch, filter size of 62 millimeters, it's under 3 inches long. However, it does weigh at 365 grams, which is heavy for its size. The lens hood takes no shortcuts and is a beautifully crafted piece of steel. Expect no less from this lens. It snaps into place really tight and there is no chance of it coming off loose. Sigma lenses generally have fantastic autofocus. Is this lens any different? Let's take a look. The autofocus is fast, the rack is smooth, and it is a fairly accurate lens. Not much more to say about that other than it's a real treat. This lens is sharp, however it does have a quirk. Let's take a look at it. Sigma is at f2, GM at 1.4, center sharpness seems comparable move to the middle frame and it looks like the GM is sharper so let's continue on and at the edges I would say they are fairly equal so maybe the Sigma has some sort of mid frame dip because you can see the circle right here is it's sort of blurry going to the far corners sigma definitely holds better there's also better uh, vignetting control one more look at f 2.8 and that's where they're essentially the same the sigma does have a lot better vignetting control it's sharpened up there's still some sort of halo effect on the sigma at the mid frames it's just a little bit it's mostly gone at this point and moving back to the center both are super crunchy sigma is wide open at f2 sony is wide open at f1.4 and what strikes me about the scene is that uh, the sony is a lot wider well it's not a lot it is noticeably wider if you can see this object right here and it's barely in the frame in this shot so let's start off at the center sharpness let's go to 100 percent and uh, i can say that the sigma is slightly sharper let's see the mid frame dip 
and it's not here. So at infinity, it definitely behaves differently. Um, I say that the midframe is comparable. Maybe the Sigma is a hair sharper. And at the far ends of the edges, the Sigma, they're fairly comparable once again, but the Sigma is definitely sharper here in this area right here, the far corner. And this lettering evergreen is just a little bit more clear and crisp on the Sigma. Okay, so both, both lenses are now at F2 and you can see that the GM is now sharper. That's the far edges. Uh, the mid frame GM still holds sharper. So the GM is stop down one stop at this point and it is sharper across the frame. Moving to F8, you can see both lenses are very blisteringly sharp in the center. I would say it's a draw. Uh, mid frame and uh, once again, it's very hard to discern the difference between the two Everything appears very sharp Far corners I would give a slight advantage to the G master. It seems just a tad more crisp this line right here Well, it's hardly any but it's just a little bit more noticeable. So stopping down the lenses are very comparable being a wide lens, there's only so much blurring capabilities. Let's see how the bokeh compares to the GM. At close distance, you can see that the GM looks better, uh, especially down in the corners right here. It's less busy. However, in practicality, it's very negligible at this distance. Both produce a very creamy background. Hard to complain either way. At further distances, you can see that the GM still has the ability to blur the background more. Uh, you can see by these trees right here, they're nice and blurry. Where the Sigma looks, I mean, from a distance, it looks like it's almost in focus, but it's not. And when it comes to these objects right here, the Sigma has some outlining, if you can see right here. Get closer right there. It has more prominent outlining. These metal rods, they, they are rods. They're not supposed to be these double lines. Uh, the Sony has a mild double line, but because of how the blur occurs here, it is not really noticeable. And once again, the Sigma is not quite as wide as the G Master. And you can see by this pole right here. How much distortion does this lens have? Let's take a look. Are you ready for it? Here we go. No, please God, no. There is quite a bit of barrel distortion and it could be worse like the 24G. And this lens is so sharp that it doesn't matter too much unless you're really, really pixel peeping hard. For videographers that have a habit of moving in and out, how well does focus breathing behave? Let's take a look. There is a moderate to high amount of focus breathing. Similar to the G Master, there is no improvement in that regard. Let's have a look at flare and sunstar performance. How well does it behave when there are lights in the scene? Let's take a look. The lens has a super multi-layer coating to minimize flare, and I think it does a great job. There's min amount of contrast loss, and you can't really see much flare blobbing. When it comes to sun stars, it's okay, it's decent. And I think it could be better if there were straight aperture blades rather than rounded. If you're considering Astro, how does the coma behave? Let's have a look. Let's look at the coma performance. This is wide open F2, and now we are at 100%. It was doing a three second shutter, so there is a tiny bit of streaking. However, other than that, the stars are nice and pointy. Let's see in the corner over here. And there is not a very apparent problem with batting. So if you're gonna use this for Astro, you will not have a problem. How much vignetting is caused by this lens? Let's have a look. So when it comes to vignetting, here it is. F2 versus 2.8 f4 so 2.8 you're almost there already and that is the the biggest jump so f2 and 
What I can tell about this, what I like about it, is that the netting feels very uniform and it's not overly harsh in the corners and uh, it's just a gradual vignette and I like it. Will this lens require a little or a lot of post-processing? Let's take a look at CA and Loca. Starting off with Loca aka Bokeh Fringing. We scroll all the way to 400%. Uh, let's back down to 100%. As you can see here, there is hardly any loca, and I don't think we need to check further. Let's take a look at chromatic aberration, wide open. In the center, there is none. We go towards the top, which is the edge. There is a hint right here, as you can see. It's just a small hint. Towards the far corners, it is more prominent. Let's see at f2.8, and the far corners does faint down a little bit. f4 and it is still there it's not a lot it's mostly disappeared by now and f5.6 it is mostly gone see a faint hint of it right here however it is mostly gone by 5.6 Some final thoughts about the Sigma 24 f2. If form and function matter to you, if an all metal build, if a great feeling in the hand matter to you, the Sigma is arguably the top of this class. The Sigma can be a great alternative to the 24 G Master and it comes in at a fraction of the cost. From the semi weather resistant design to the excellent lens hood, to the oh so buttery focus control and traditional aperture ring this lens is a high performing modern lens that is a great alternative option to consider if you want to know how this lens compares to the samyang f1.8 and sony compact g be sure to subscribe to be notified when i do those comparisons thanks for watching and see you on the next one